I'd like to show you how Garden Cat is used in the environment where your unit of measure is a foot. So a length of wall, say 12 foot 6 inches, would be inserted as a line 12.5 units long. Let's do a small design for a courtyard. A line from here and we'll track up in that vertical uh, direction and we'll just type 18.5 so we're saying the first wall of that courtyard is 18 and a, and a half feet or 18 feet 6 inches and we can come across at 45 degrees now and we'll imagine that it's uh, 16 and a half feet and we'll come over in this direction well maybe 30 feet to make our maths easy and we'll come down here 30 feet as well. You might notice that I can go click, 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 click and actually reach 30 feet without actually having to type it. So there's the walls of our courtyard. Let's imagine now that we wanted to put a circle in because we wanted to put a raised um, area in here for seating and uh, I've put a circle in. You can pick and it's much better remembering that the construction team's got to build this design pick the circle, pick properties, and make the radius something that the design team can work with. Rather than 8.069 feet, let's make it 8 feet. They'll be able to swing a circle very easily now. Let's turn O-snap grips on. That will enable us to go draw and line. We'll be able to draw a line from the quadrant of that circle across in that direction. Let's go 7 feet. Then we'll go along down here 5 feet, and then we'll come down through here. 15 feet. So we'll have a garden bed area here and we want that garden bed area to go and continue on. So it's right click, repeat line, find the other quadrant at the bottom there and draw a line through there. Because we put the circle in accurately and we made it seven or eight, I can't quite remember, we made it eight feet in diameter, we could pick draw circle radius again, turn center snap on, which will help us find that one. And we could make this now 7.5, seven and a half feet, and that gives us our header area. Now we might want to put in some hatching to indicate that that's going to be brick. So it's hatch, pick a hatch pattern, I've picked brick, give it some sort of scale, pick the entities, so we pick the middle circle and OK it. Now it's patterned to indicate clearly to the viewer that it's going to be brick paved. Now we might want to put in some planting. Let's imagine that there's a, an existing tall tree on the site. So let's pick this symbol, a relatively clean symbol, select it once it's in and scale it. I'll turn OSNAP center on. That will enable me to... you must have missed that one. Uh, sorry, grips and find grips and I can scale that up. Now we want to put some plants of our own in. So it's library, plant selector. Well, I'll choose number three, pop that one in. I'll roll in a little so you can see what I'm doing. I select it, I copy it and place it down through here. I might then want to choose a different plant symbol. So it's library, plant selector. Let's pick this one, number 13. Pop it in, same deal, pick it copy it. I'll put a number of instances of it in and then I'll right click and go zoom extents which will push me out to the show me the whole drawing. It's a good idea to select things and to scale them to take a little bit of the repetition away and then we might scale this one. We don't want our computer drawing to look too computerized and we'll rotate our symbol so that we break away from that regularity and now it's starting to look a little better. Let's imagine we're going to put a crepe myrtle in in this area through here, a Lagostromeria, uh, Lag Lagostromeria rather, and uh, so what I want to, this client to see is what does that plant look like? So it's a drawer and insert raster and I'll go new and I can go straight to my photo library pick an image that will show a client what this particular plant looks like and just draw a box like so. So if I scroll out a little, now we're going to put a symbol in here to represent this particular plant, maybe label it using draw and text, and the text will come in as a hand-lettered font. 
I'll zoom in on here just to show you that uh, we do get whoops we do get very good resolution in here you can see great detail of the particular plant in question so I hope that that gives you a good idea that you can lay out an accurate drawing using feet and inches because it's so accurate you can get useful information just say you want to know how far this edging is from the fence line it would be a simple matter to go information distance how far from uh, the midpoint of that line you want to go perpendicular to this line so we'd go oh snap set perpendicular on and click and so it's 12.552 is the precise distance there so you could set that off at uh, 12 and a half feet and uh, that would be accurate enough for your construction team so you're providing lots of information for your client and for your construction team so that's garden cad in the hands of someone working with feet as their base unit